Hi friends, I'm Jeanette Brossert. I'm a mosaic artist in Durham, North Carolina. I've been doing mosaics for 20 years and I do tons of projects um, with school children and from anything from big murals all the way down to um, paper mosaics. So I wanted to share a few tips with you while we are not in school and I hope that I will be able to see you at your school again real soon to make a mosaic. But in the meanwhile, if you would like some ideas about how you can be thinking about mosaic design at home um, while we have this time, I thought I would give you some, some tips. My first tip is you don't need fancy materials. Um, really, if you have graph paper at home, like you would use for math, that's a great place to start. When I'm designing mosaics at home, I almost always start with graph paper because I can measure the boxes so I can make my projects to scale, whether they're big for a building or smaller projects. And the other thing is that the square is a unit shape you already know. So from a square, you can turn that into a triangle. You can put two squares together to make a rectangle. You can cut the corners off the squares and turn it into a circle. So I like starting with just the most basic element that we all learned in pre-K or earlier. Um, so graph paper is a great place to start. If you don't have graph paper at home, that's okay. You can make your own graph paper. The easiest way to start with that is note lined notebook paper. So if you have a spiral, old spiral that's been sitting around or notebook paper that you have left over or that you have from school, grab a couple pieces of notebook paper, a ruler, a pencil, and, and if you don't have a ruler, something with a hard straight edge is fine. The edge of a hard book also works. Um, I'm going to show you quickly um, how you can turn that notebook paper into graph paper and then I'm going to show you a few design tips to get you started with the graph paper and um, we can go from there. So I'm going to show you how to make the graph paper just with lined notebook paper from an old spiral. I like starting with that little pink margin line and just taking my ruler and making a line right on that line, nice and bright. You're making a vertical line across the horizontal lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, use your hard edge to give you a nice straight line. You can take the ruler, and for this college ruled notebook, the width between the lines is about a quarter of an inch. So you can mark quarter of an, an inch dots all the way across the top of your page and the bottom of the page to give you some guidelines to draw your straight lines. I'm just going to do a few to get you started, but you can continue this over the, across the whole page to create your graph paper. So then just starting back at that margin line that you already drew, working with the first set of points, one point over here, one point over here, draw yourself a line. Slide your ruler down to the next set of points, draw another line. You don't have to be super exact, um, but measuring is making it as close as you can, and it's good practice, practicing your math. And it will help your design to turn out better because you're creating squares that are of close to equal size to each other. So you get the point. You can continue all the way down the paper so that you end up with graph paper instead of just plain lined notebook paper. If you have a younger student, or are a younger student, or you prefer not working with something quite so small and fiddly, you can turn your small box graph paper into a larger grid by using four squares clumped together. So you can go back to um, the drawing board, basically, and for every two squares, you can then mark off a grid that is much larger. And sometimes that's easier to start with if you're not quite sure where to start. As far as with designs and where to start, I like starting with something simple. 
a simple icon that you're drawn to, like this moon. Um, of course, if you want to do some other um, learning about stories that have to do with moons or the phases of the moon, those would all be things that you could tie in together with your, with your pixel drawings. Um, or maybe you want to start with the letter of your first name or a quilt type of pattern, a symmetrical color pattern. Those are always fun to work with. But start with something simple to kind of get yourself warmed up. Then you can move on to something a little more intricate. So thinking back to the small square graph paper, starting with one sheet of a lot of squares can be really intimidating. So often I start with blocking off a smaller section to work with. It's kind of like if you're going to paint or draw and you get a big blank piece of paper and you have no idea where to start. When working with the small graph paper or even the large grid on a simple design, I suggest blocking off a, a smaller space. And so you're not thinking about every single square on the page. You are limiting yourself to an area of design. And I like starting with something that's 10 squares by 10 squares. That gives you 100 whole squares to work with. I think thinking about um, symmetrical designs is a good place to start. So you can imagine the midline and start designing something on one half and then mirroring it on the other half. This is a alien robot creature and so coming up with something that works on one half is easily then reproduced on the other side. Um, you can color in the squares using markers or colored pencils or crayons, whatever you have, and varying those colors in between does help make your design look a little more exciting. Um, so for this alien robot I've used like a hot pink and a red mixed together and um, it does really give you a little bit more dynamic coloring whether than if it was just one solid color. So I'm still working on coloring it in but you can get the idea. Have fun making your pixel design. There's lots of inspiration um, on video games and on the web for simple pixelated designs. You could also Google and look up um, simple cross stitch designs. They're very, very similar, assigning one color to one square. So happy mosaic designing on graph paper and stay tuned for another suggestion soon. And before I'm gone, I will share with you my real little mosaics. These are with glass tiles. Um, so you can see how easily then um, you can turn your design on paper into something a little more fantastic when you get the chance to have some of those materials and we can get back to normal. Thanks. Bye.